We're going to get into a very fun casting, and I have a special announcement about the Christmas live stream. Don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you, as always, from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And indeed, I've got a really fun casting we'll talk about in just a second. First of all, though, I want to talk about the 2022 Christmas live stream. I have set the date. The date for the live stream is Wednesday, December 21st, and it will kick off at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. That's Wednesday, December 21st at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Now, there's going to be so many things that I'm going to be giving away. L listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. Again, we're going to be giving away magic cards, TV magic cards. We're going to be giving away a jeweler saw set. We're going to be giving away fat guy t-shirts, keychains, and stickers. We're going to be giving away Gumbies, and uh, you you may remember in the past we've done the uh, Fat Guy Vanilla, and then we did the Fat Guy Hot Cocoa. This year we're going to be giving away Fat Guy Cookie Mixes. Um, we're going to be giving away a model kit, wacky packages, some doc, uh, Dr. Squatch soap and deodorant sets, some Christmas Vacation DVDs, and a surprise monster prize. And that's just part of it, okay? More to come, more to come, more to come. I'm gonna give away a lot of stuff. It is my way of kind of kicking off the Christmas week there. So I, I really wanna spread Christmas joy through the live stream and through giving away a bunch of Christmas gifts. I wish I could give something to everybody, I really do. Um, this is the best way I can do it. So look, you have to be there live to win, okay? And if you watch my channel and appreciate it at all, I have some 17,000 subscribers. I, I have set a goal for myself that I want to get at least one to 300 people to tune in live for my Christmas extravaganza. And the only way that's going to happen is if you guys step up to the plate. So if you want to say Merry Christmas to me back, I'm asking you, spread the word. Get your friends, get your family, get anybody that's willing to log in and enjoy my Christmas extravaganza. Uh, I'll touch on a lot of um, old tiny Christmas things and I'll show you some fun stuff. It's going to be, uh, it really... For anybody, anybody should be able to come and enjoy the live stream and have a chance to win some cool stuff. So I'm imploring you, spread the word about my live stream on December 21st. It's a Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Don't miss it. And please, please help me make my dream, my Christmas dream come true. And let's just... Get a monster crowd there. The more people signed in, the funner the live stream will be. All right. Having said that, today we have a really fun diecast car. I've had this one on the uh, back burner for a while, and I finally have pulled it out. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's what I consider in real life to be one of the most beautiful cars ever made. So let's get to work. So today we're going to be tackling a Hot Wheels Rolls Royce, and you'll notice it didn't do its normal roll-in because when I got this one, it frankly had no tires on it. Um, fortunately for me, it does have all its hubs, and they seem to be in pretty good shape. Uh, overall, the car's in actually decent condition. Um, it certainly needs uh, some tires on it and a facelift, so let's get to work. Now, um, I've always thought the Rolls-Royce was a beautiful car. I, I love the look of them. Um, I, I understand they're not the greatest driving car in the world. They're meant more for the people in the back seat than in the driver's seat. But uh, I still think they're really just beautiful. I love the look of them. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and start this one, and we're going to start it, as always, by getting it apart. We'll use my Vix bits and drill off the posts. And this is something that never happens. I drill out the posts, and the card just basically fell apart. And that was really nice. Normally, it's always a struggle getting the base off. Anyhow, we had the base, the interior, glass, and then, of course, a roll's body. Now, this casting actually has some rough spots in the in the body itself, but I'm not overly concerned about that because uh, my plan is going to call for an opaque paint job. Uh, this is going to end up getting primer, and, and that's going to make dealing with the rough spots easier. It's going to help make sure that I can see what's bad and what's not, and then it's going to show me where I need to be sanding and, and working on the, the casting itself. So... Um, the, the paint scheme is actually going to really benefit me in getting the body prepped. So I'll use the Vix bits and, and prep the ends of the post. Then I drill both of them out. And once they're drilled out, a uh, little dab of oil and my uh, tap. And I can thread those posts so they'll take a screw. That way I can put this car back together later. Uh, of course, you've seen me using it. I love my little tap handle from Bright Vision. Uh, it's, yes, it's just a little knurled piece of aluminum, but I love this thing. Remember the good old days when I always forgot to tap and get the posts ready and I'd go to paint and then... I'd go to put the car back together and realize that I hadn't done it. <laughs> those, those were the good old days. Fortunately, I don't do that anymore. Anyhow, um, throw a couple screws in here before we head to the warm liquid goo phase. That keeps all the gunk and crud out of the, uh, the posts. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I don't forget this step anymore. So, okay, here's the jar of my crappy, crappy goo. I, I may have to find a whole different goo because I hate this new version of Citrus Strip. It's too thick and gummy. I mean, it just it doesn't make for good goo drops. It doesn't have that beautiful, deep orange jelly-looking finish to it. I hate this stuff. I may have to search for new goo. Anyhow, into the warm liquid goo goes the body, and down it goes into the depths. So I left the car in the goo overnight, and I didn't really need to. Um, it's just, uh, I was done working for the day, so I, I just left it. Plucked it out, took it off uh, to the sink, and washed down, scrubbed it out real good. Uh, and now I'm drying it and getting a good look at it. Uh, even though I'm going to do the uh, opaque paint job, I'm still going to wire brush this, uh, as I always do. Um, I guess it, maybe it's just reinforcing good habits because this really doesn't need it but it's just something I do and and maybe that so that when I really do need to do it I don't forget it you know it's like muscle memory or something but anyhow uh, we'll hit this up with the brass bristle brush and then we can go ahead and we'll get some primer on it figure out what we have to do in terms of uh, sanding and smoothing this body out and we'll move ahead Okay, so you know how I feel about Tamiya Fine Primer. We're going to put some on here. And uh, I ended up doing several coats with a lot of sanding in between because the roof was gnarly. But in the end, this came out smooth as glass and it's going to take the paint really nicely. With all the sanding done and the primer dry, I'm going to use some of this gold plating by Createx. And the nice thing about this is it you just shake it up really well and you don't need to thin it or anything. It's airbrush ready. Squirt a little bit in there and I'm going to put a, a gold plating finish over the entire car. Um, this is going to hopefully do two things for me. Uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of it in the second color, but also it's going to be the primary color for the top half of the car. Uh, I'm picturing golden brown 
I think those are very classy colors with a two-tone finish on the rolls. I think that just just reeks of high end. And so that's what we're going to go with. So anyhow, we'll get this gold plating on, let it dry, and then we can move ahead. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, you know, I could very easily, through the magic of editing, tell you that all of the masking went fine. But the truth is, this is the second go-around because I stupidly masked off the wrong part of the body. So all of a sudden I realized, wait a second, I masked off where I need to paint. So I had to pull it all off and start all over again. Um, but anyhow, I did finally do it right. And listen, masking, nobody likes it. It's not fun. But, you know, a great finish depends on great masking. So take your time, do it right. Um, and you'll be rewarded. So once it's masked, I can take it back over to the paint booth, and I'm going to go with a very, very light coat of just Tamiya brown paint, and I'm hoping maybe just a little bit of that gold will come through because this is not a transparent brown. This is, this is just regular old brown. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't really care. If it's just solid opaque brown, that's fine. If there's a little gold showing in it, that's fine too. But I am going to put the brown on very lightly and, and cross my fingers that I get a little bit of that gold showing. Um, we'll just have to see how it works out. So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and I get a little bit lucky here as just a hint of this gold does punch through the brown, and it really looks fantastic. Um, I, I, I'll be honest again and say that I didn't think it would. I thought it was just going to be brown, but some of that gold did come through, and it looks amazing. So anyhow... I applied the paint very, very lightly so it wouldn't bleed, made sure it dried. Uh, and then when I was done cleaning everything up, I went straight over to the other side of my room and started to take off the masking. Now, I found that you can take the masking off about the time that you get everything cleaned up, and that seems to be about the right amount of time. Uh, and this is all just peeling off really easily. And because I did take my time, I'm getting nice, crisp lines and the car is looking fantastic. Okay, so let's deal with the base and the glass. We'll go ahead and we'll start with the base, uh, get some accoutrements out so that I can deal with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to just hit it up with my flits um, to take off some of the tarnish. So I got my little bin here, and like I said, we're using the flits calcium... Uh, uh, what is it, Cal calcium lime and whatever spray. Um, and I'll just drop the base in my little container here. I'll spray some of that on. Let it sit for just the shortest amount of time. Now look, if you if you put it on and leave it too long, you're actually going to, your, your base is going to start to turn black, and you don't want that. So I put it on, I let it get rid of the tarnish, then I wash it and brass bristle brush it. Just remember... Don't overdo it or you'll, you'll, you'll be a sad puppy. So here I am back from the sink where I've washed it. We'll go ahead and dry it and it's looking pretty good. Hit it with the brass bristle brush. Should make it look a lot better. Now, depending on where you're at in your life or how, how you are doing things, you could actually probably stop right here after the brass bristle brush. But you can always get better using little flits and the rotary tool. So uh, if I can, I will. So I'll put a little flits uh, polish on the base, 
hit it up with the rotary tool and a buffing wheel, and I'm going to get this thing really, really super shiny. It's going to look beautiful. After the rotary tool, I always kind of rub this down on just some of my blue shop towels, and then I'll switch over and I'll use the microfiber to really get in there because, you know, it's got that kind of rough texture and it gets down in the nooks and crannies and you just have to work it and go different directions and really just get in there and you'll be rewarded with an amazing looking base. Now, I've done all that work. I want it to stay looking nice. You know, tarnish, it'll come right back. I'm going to protect the base using my Renaissance wax. And again, you just get some on your finger and you smear it all over the place. You just rub it in and just really get in in there. And, and once you're done, you just kind of let it dry for a minute and then you buff it off. And what you've got is a beautiful, shiny, natural metal base that's not going to tarnish in a week from now. I, if I were to name my two favorite products that I use in my die-cast restorations, it would be the Flitz Polish and the Renaissance Wax. All right, the base is looking great. Like I said at the beginning, the hubs looked fine, so there's nothing I need to do to them. And I'm going to do something different and unusual here, kind of. Okay, so I'm picking out the wheels, and you know me. I'm going to go with the deep dish chromes. Uh, this car is going to take four medium deep dish chromes but part of me was thinking maybe i need to go with a more uh, american wheel with just the silver painted wheels so i actually was looking at that i couldn't make myself do it but maybe that speaks to my mindset changing a little bit i don't know maybe um you know i i still went with the deep dish chromes i love the way it looks I don't regret it, but hey, at least I opened my mind to trying something new. All right, so once all four wheels are on, I will take the alignment tool and I'll put it behind the hub and press the wheel the rest of the way on. And by doing it this way, I'm going to make sure each wheel is seated equally on the hub, okay? Because the the alignment tool will act like a little bit of a backstop. All right, so that done, I can put the base to the side, and now I can turn my attention to the glass. It's actually in pretty good shape and really just needs some love from flits. So I break out a Q-tip, a little flits, and I start to polish away as much as I need to on all of the glass. And uh, you'd be surprised. This flits is so versatile, man. It, the glass is going to look perfect when I'm done. I, without even going to gauzy, I could stop right with the flits and everybody would rave about the look of the car. Uh, I won't do that, but I could. That's how good flits is. So anyhow, after I've polished it out really well, uh, I'll buff it down with the uh, shop towel and then gauzy, gauzy, gauzy. Okay, uh, this container's getting low. I've got a new container, so I'm just going to kind of plop it in there swirl it around, make sure it's fully coated, then I'll pluck it out with the uh, the tweezers. What I need to do is actually I need to open up the new can and then dump this leftover into that. So you'll probably see my new uh, jar of gauzy coming out pretty soon. All right, so I'm going to just set it on a little piece of paper towel, let the excess wick off, then we'll go ahead and put it into the trusty onion saver and let it dry. So after the casting had dried, I gave it a clear coat. I'm so excited about the way this paint looks. I, I, I just was itching to get to this part and put this car back together. So we drop in the glass, we pop in the interior, we place that super shiny base on it. And that base, it's also got the, the front grill on there, which is so important. You really need it to be shiny. So, you know, this, this base was... 
Not just an afterthought, it had to be part of it. Anyhow, got it all together, I'll throw a couple screws in, lock this together, and we can call this casting done. There it is, my Rolls Royce Silver Shadow Hot Wheels Red Line um, Resto Mod is what we're going to go with. Resto Mod. I love it. I think the car itself, Rolls makes such a beautiful car. I really, really love the look of it. And black, silver, white, two tones. Uh, those are all the standard high class colors. But I think a, a brown and a gold together really work here. I think it just is gorgeous. I uh, love that car. I understand Rolls isn't a driver's car. It's better sitting in the back. But man, I sure wouldn't mind having one. I got to tell you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a giant thumbs up. Click subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to hear from you guys. And don't forget to please tune in for my live stream on December 6th, uh, December 21st, the 6th. <laughs> oh my gosh. <It's, laughs> I'm such an idiot. December 21st at 6 Pacific time for the live stream. It's going to be a lot of fun. Until then... I'm going to get out of here because I am clearly losing my mind. All right, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.